When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard Jesus and sent some of the elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed, for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turned to the crowd. Following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bier they were carrying him on, and the bearers stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe, and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent to us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear and the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women there is no one greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right, because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purposes for themselves, because they had not been baptized by John. And the Old Testament reading. One day Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, At dawn we'll kill him. But Samson lay there until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Some time later he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Surak, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength, and how we can overpower him, so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you eleven hundred shekels of silver." So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, If anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. 
Then, with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you've been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric of the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids off his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with a pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke from his sleep and pulled up the pin in the loom of the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you've made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such a nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding grain in the prison, but the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to celebrate, saying, Our god has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temples, that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof there were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me, please. God, strengthen me just once more. Let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtek in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel twenty years. Now a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you about which him which I heard you utter a curse, I had that silver with me, I took it. Then his mother said, The Lord bless you, my son. When he returned the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son to make an image overlaid with silver. I will give it back to you. So after he returned the silver to his mother, she took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to a silversmith who used them to make the idol, and it was put in Micah's house. Now this man Micah had a shrine, and he made an ephod and some household gods and installed one of his sons as priest. In those days Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. A young Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, who had been living with the clan of Judah, left that town in search of some other place to stay. On his way, he came to Micah's house in the hill country of Ephraim. Micah asked him, Where are you from? I'm a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah, he said, and I'm looking for a place to stay. Then Micah said to him, Live with me and be my father and priest, and I'll give you ten shekels of silver a year, your clothes and your food. So the Levite agreed to live with him, and the young man became like one of his sons to him. Then Micah installed the Levite, and the young man became his priest and lived in his house. And Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will be good to me, since this Levite has become my priest. In those days Israel had no king. And in those days the tribe of the Danites was seeking a place of their own where they might settle, because they had not yet come into an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. So the Danites sent five of their leading men from Zorah and Eshtal to spy out the land and explore it. These men represented all the Danites. They told them, go explore the land. So they entered the hill country of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah, where they spent the night. 
When they were near Micah's house, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. So they turned in there and asked him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? Why are you here? He told them what Micah had done for him, and he said, He has hired me, and I am his priest. Then they said to him, Please inquire of God to learn whether our journey will be successful. The priest answered them, Go in peace, your journey has the Lord's approval. So the five men left and came to Laish, where they saw that the people were living in safety, like the Sidonians, at peace and secure. And since their land lacked nothing, they were prosperous. Also, they lived a long way from the Sidonians and had no relationship with anyone else. When they returned to Zorah and Eshtal, their fellow Danites asked them, How did you find things? They answered, Come on, let's attack them. We have seen the land and it's very good. Aren't you going to do something? Don't hesitate to go there and take it over. When you get there, you will find an unsuspecting peoples and a spacious land that God has put into your hands, a land that lacks nothing whatever. Then 600 men of the Danites, armed with battle, set out from Zora and Eshtal. On their way, they set up camp near Kirith Jerim in Judah. This is why the place west of Kirith Jerim is called Menah, Dan, to this day. From there, they went to the hill country of Ephraim and came to Micah's house. Then the five men who had spied out the land of Laish said to their fellow Danites, do you know that one of these houses has an ephod, some of the household gods, and an image of overlaid with silver? Now you know what to do. So they turned in there and went to the house of the young Levite at Micah's place and greeted him. The six hundred Danites, armed with battle, stood at the entrance of the gate. The five men who had spied out the land went inside and took the idol, the ephod, and the household gods, while the priest and the six hundred armed men stood at the entrance of the gate. When the five men went into Micah's house and took the idol, the ephod, and the household gods, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They answered him, Be quiet, don't say a word. Come with us and be our father and priest. Isn't it better that you serve a tribe and clan in Israel as priest rather than just one man's household? The priest was very pleased. He took the ephod, the household gods, and the idol and went along with the people. Putting their little children, their livestock, and possessions in front of them, they turned away and left. When they had gone some distance from Micah's house, the men who lived near Micah were called together and overtook the Danites. They shouted after them. The Danites turned and said to Micah, What's the matter with you that you called out your men to fight? He replied, You took the gods I made and my priest and went away. What else can, do I have? How, you ask, what's the matter with you? The Danites answered, Don't argue with us or some of the men may get angry and attack you and you and your family will lose your lives. So the Danites went their way, and Micah, seeing what, that they were too strong for him, turned around and went back home. Then they took what Micah had made and his priest and went on to Laish against the people at peace and secure. They attacked them with a sword and burned down their city. There was no one to rescue them because they lived a long way from Sidon and had no relationship with anyone else. The city was in a valley near Beth Rehob. The Danites rebuilt the city and settled there. They named it Dan after their ancestor Dan, who was born to Israel, through the city used to be called Laish. There the Danites set up the, themselves the idol, and Jonathan, son of Gershon, son of Moses, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. They continued to use the idol Micah had made. All the time the house of God was in Shiloh.